Welcome to our screencast on the rise of Nazi Germany. We'll start out as usual with our essential question and big idea, and then we'll briefly discuss German inflation, uh, as, that, as that was one of the key factors that led to the rise of Nazis to power. Then we'll take a closer look at politics in Europe during the 1930s, for instance, uh, which states were democratic, which were authoritarian, and which started out as democratic and shifted to a fascist state such as Germany. Then we'll have a brief discussion on Hitler and his viewpoints, how he rose to power, uh, and some of the ideology behind his movement. Then we'll take a closer look at the Nazi state itself. Okay, once the Nazis came to power, how did they exercise power? What were some of the things they did to consolidate it? And how did they start to initially expand? We finished the screencast with a clip of uh, actual Hitler Youth Rally. It's a clip from Triumph of the Will, which is a documentary slash propaganda film that was promoting Nazi ideals. Um, as always, we'll have the guided viewing questions that you'll complete as you watch this uh, screencast. And then the summit of assessment is the Edmodo quiz. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in class or uh, in Edmodo or through an email. All right, enjoy the screen. Let's begin with the essential question. How did Hitler and the Nazis gain power and rule Germany? Okay, so throughout this screencast, keep that in mind. How did he come to power? And once in power, how did they uh, rule over the country? The big idea, we're going to focus on human rights. Okay, that's one of the ideas that really transcends any period in world history. Uh, in particular, we'll take a look at Hitler's totalitarian state, how it was accepted, but it also uh, persecuted German Jews and minorities of all sorts. Okay, so again, keep that in mind as well as we go through today's screencast. Alright, we'll start by taking a look at German inflation. Now, why would we be looking at the price of bread when talking about the rise of Nazi Germany? Well, economics had a lot to do with their rise. If we take a look at 1918, the price of a loaf of bread was 0.63 Deutschmarks. In a very short period of time, due to inflation, the price goes, it's out of control. Okay, by 1923, the price goes from 0 0.63 to 250 Deutschmarks. Okay, think about that for a second. Okay, it costs less than, let's say, a, a dollar. Now all of a sudden it's 250 to 300 dollars for one loaf of bread. Then it gets really insane. If you look at November of 1923, it, it's almost beyond comprehension. It's 201 billion Deutschmarks for a loaf of bread. So essentially it means money is completely worthless. Okay, your money's worth more burning in your fireplace for heat at this point than it actually is to buy things. Okay, so how did this affect the rise of, of the Nazis? Okay, well, we'll come back to this question a little bit later in the screencast. Uh, but just remember that the economic situation did play an important role. All right, next we'll take a look at the political developments in Europe uh, in the 1930s regarding uh, the types of, of government at the federal level uh, for each nation. Politics in Europe during the 1930s took many forms. Authoritarian governments were established in Turkey, Yugoslavia, Hungary, Poland, Lithuania, and Portugal. A communist government ruled the USSR and a fascist government ruled Italy. Democratic governments resided in several countries, including Ireland, the United Kingdom, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, France, and Czechoslovakia. Romania, Bulgaria, Greece, Albania, Spain, Estonia, and Latvia were democratic governments that became authoritarian. Germany and Austria were two democratic governments that became fascist. Okay, let's turn to Hitler and his views. The main idea for this section is that Adolf Hitler's ideas were based on racism and German nationalism. And in a second, we'll discuss how he merged a whole bunch of different ideas uh, together to come up with what we know as the Nazi ideology. Okay, Adolf Hitler entered politics by joining the German Workers' Party in Munich. This was an extremist right-wing nationalist party, and we'll get into the specifics of that in a second. Uh, the image below is the original uh, symbol for that German Workers' Party. By the summer of 1921, Hitler took over the party, which was renamed the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or Nazi for short. 
Now, after an unsuccessful revolt against the government, Hitler was thrown in prison, and there he wrote Mein Kampf, which uh, endorsed the German nationalism, strong anti-Semitism, and anti-communism. In a way, this was the blueprint for the, the future Nazi ideologies. Now, he linked these ideas together with his interpretation of the social Darwinian struggle, uh, where, in his mind, superior nations were given the right to expand their territory. At the same time, he also sa uh, said that certain people have the right to rule certain superior individuals have the right to gain authoritarian leadership over the masses okay so again he linked nationalism anti-semitism anti-communism in this idea of social darwinism together now hitler also expanded the nazi party and pretty soon it became the largest political party in the reichstag now there were over 30 political parties at the time, so it, it divvied up a lot of the the, um, the loyalties, but at the time it, it became the biggest party. Now the Reichstag, that was just the German parliament, the German legislature. Okay, Hitler won support of the right-wing elites in Germany, uh, who in 1933 pressured the president to allow Hitler to become chancellor and create a new government. Now who were these right-wing elites? Well. There were industrial leaders, landed aristocrats, military officers, and also high-serving members of the current bureaucracy. Now, what ended up happening was they passed, or the Reichstag passed the Enabling Act. What this did, it allowed the new government to ignore the Constitution for four years while it issued laws to deal with the country's problems. In a way, what ended up happening was it created a legal seizure of power, where Hitler was allowed to take over the government without an uprising it was it was done through legal means through legislation now a dic uh, Hitler now acting basically as a dictator uh, the Nazi party quickly brought all institutions under their control purged the Jews from civil service and jobs and set up concentration camps now this time he blamed the Jews for all the economic hardships that we were talking about earlier such as the inflation the high unemployment it, it was blamed on the Jews now the concentration camps they were set up not just for Jews but for anyone who opposed him okay, including uh, leaders of other political parties now when the president died in 1934 Hitler became the sole ru ruler of Germany and he immediately did a couple of things one he abolished all political parties other than the Nazi party and uh, we'll see a quick clip of that later on in the screencast but he also got rid of the office of president. He just completely got rid of it. Okay, so he became the sole ruler, and at this point he started demanding oaths of loyalty from everyone, referring to him as the Fuhrer, or which means the leader. Now, the Nazi state. Between 1933 and 1939, Hitler really consolidated his power. And at the uh, same time, he used anti-Semitism, economic policy, and propaganda to... Uh, not just maintain his power, but to expand uh, and fulfill his future ambitions, which we'll turn to next. Now, part of Nazi ideology was the idea of an Aryan state, okay, an Aryan race that would eventually dominate the world under his leadership. Now, what the Nazis did is they distorted the term Aryan. What they did is they twisted it so that it goes back to the ancient Greece, uh, ancient Greece and Rome, and they say that they are the the closest bloodline to those leaders. Now he also thought that the Holy Roman Empire, okay, which was in the area which has modern Germany, was the first Reich or the first empire. He then said that the German Empire between 1871 and 1918 represented the second Reich. Now his goal was to create the third Reich, okay, or the, the next generation of Aryan rule. So to achieve this, Hitler and the Nazis used economic policy, mass demonstrations like the, the Nazi rallies at Nuremberg, organizations, and, and pure terror. Now Heinrich Himmler directed the, the uh, Schutzstaffen, or commonly called the SS. What they did is they used terror and Nazi ideology to promote the Aryan master race. Now this started out as a secret police, but it eventually developed into execution squads which led death camps. And this is uh, a picture of Himmler here standing to the right of of Hitler. 
Now, on the economic front, Hitler created public works projects to help people with, uh, to help alleviate the high unemployment rates and end the depression. How did he do this? Well, a lot of it was through rearmament programs or, or factories and in, in production made to create weaponry. Now, in 1932, there were about 5 million people unemployed in Germany. A lot of his policies did employ people. By 1937, the unemployment rate was down to a half million. Okay, so it went from five million down to a half million. Now this helped Hitler gain legitimacy. Okay, and some business leaders at this time were still thinking, well, is this a good thing with some bad negative consequences attached, or is this something that is pure evil with some good outcomes? And and at the beginning, a lot of people still weren't sure, and that's why they didn't take action uh, to overthrow the regime. Now, the Nazis used mass demonstrations and meetings, uh, such as the Nuremberg party rallies, which we can see an image of to the right, to gain support and to evoke excitement from the German people. We'll take a closer look at one of these rallies for the Hitler Youth later in the screencast. Under Hitler's regime, women were seen as wives and mothers who would bear children destined to see the success of the Aryan race. Uh, women were only allowed to work in gender-specific jobs such as nursing and social work, but they were highly encouraged to stay at home and not work at all. And this is an actual slogan from the Nazi party. They said, get a hold of pots and pans and broom and you'll sooner find a groom. Just imagine someone trying to promote that today. I, I don't think it would go over too well. Okay, the Nazi party also began expanding their anti-Semitism to uh, anti-Jewish boycotts, new racial laws, and, and these new laws were called the Nuremberg Laws. We can see a uh, picture to the right. This is an actual chart that was distributed uh, by the Nazis during this time to show who qualifies as Jewish. Okay, so they defined anyone with one Jewish grandparent as a Jew. Uh, they excluded all Jews from German citizenship, and they stripped them of most, if not all, of their civil rights in society. They also forbade marriages between German citizens and Jews, and they forbade Jews from teaching in schools and participating in the arts. They also required Jews to wear a yellow star of David and carry identification cards. We can see the star on, on a uh, Jew in Germany on the top right, and then an example of an ID card on the bottom right. Okay, a new phase, a new phase in the persecution of Jews started in. In 1938, this was called Kristallnacht. The Nazis burned synagogues and Jewish businesses and simultaneously sent 30,000 Jews to concentration camps. So this really turned from uh, some minimal persecution to outright attacks on the Jewish population. After this time period, the Jews were barred from all public transportation, all public buildings. They were prohibited from owning or working in any retail stores, and a lot of times they were uh, contained in certain areas of a city known as a ghetto, in worst case scenarios, sent off to the concentration camps. Now at this point, the SS encouraged Jews to emigrate from Germany to just leave. Those were the lucky ones. The, the Jews that were actually fortunate enough to escape from Germany at this time were uh, some of the the only ones to survive this period. Okay, to summarize uh, the rise of Nazi Germany. Losses in World War One and economic devastation led to political struggles in Germany which led to the Nazi Party's rise. Uh, Hitler's Nazi Party created a totalitarian state once in power, eliminated all other political parties, and created a, a regime based on racism and German nationalism. And the Nazis enforced their will and, and maintained and, and strengthened their power through secret police concentration camps, and as we see to the picture to the right, propaganda. Uh, so it says Nazi parties, anti-Semitic policies. The, um, the banner there says, by resisting the Jews, I fight for the Lord. So again, even mixing in some religion into that um, but in the end, using this propaganda to strengthen their power. Okay, we'll conclude this screencast by viewing a clip from a Hitler Youth Rally, uh, which was part of a documentary called Triumph of the Will. Okay, it was actually more of a propaganda piece than a documentary. Okay, so as you view this, keep in mind some of the propaganda techniques that are used, the mass rallies, the demonstration. Also think about why the Hitler Youth was created. What was the goal of it? 
Okay, why do you think Hitler spent so much time and energy creating the Hitler Youth? Deutschland und hinter uns kommt Deutschland. Ja. 